There's a question that I get asked a lot as a Bubble coach, and that is, is Bubble the right platform, the right no-code web app builder for my SaaS idea or whatever web app uh, you might want to be creating? Uh, so I thought I'd just take some time and respond to a video like this because these sort of videos get loads of traction based on the title. I wouldn't use Bubble to build a no-code SaaS uh, here's why. Uh, so I'm just going to highlight a few bits of this video and basically respond to them. This is a reaction video. Um, so, you know, leave a comment if you want to see me kind of respond to other takes in the startup or the SaaS or the no code um, social media content. Yep, happy to respond to it. But let's let's just dive into this Bubble video. It's a good product. But in 2023, I think it's become a bit overrated. I would hesitate to use Bubble in all but a few cases. Here's why. Okay, so the first thing I'll say is, yeah, we're all content creators here, or or at least I am, and so is this guy. Um, but uh, I think that's just an overgeneralization. Um, a, a theme that I'm probably going to return to, having just watched this video and, and thought of what my key points are going to be, is that uh, no one's pretending that Bubble is perfect for every situation. Um, but uh, I wouldn't phrase it as only a few cases. I would say that uh, the, the ideas that you can come up with and then spend an afternoon building that app in Bubble and get a working MVP, uh, at least for yourself, you know, it takes longer to add in billing and, and deploying it to live and, and marketing and, and your product development cycle, all of which, by the way, if you want to find out more, head over to our website, planetnocode.com, because we are running a program called Mastery, where uh, I bring in the other co-founders, which uh, you may not have seen on camera, but uh, they are experts in marketing and product development. Uh, and so if you want to be part of that, we basically run an a, a intense mentorship program um, where we teach uh, product, marketing and building uh, apps with Bubble. Um, so, yeah, let's just be aware of uh, how, you know, I don't want to don't want to just necessarily accuse this guy of, of clickbait, but um, you, you know we we write titles and we ter we we pick a turn of phrase that uh, is going to engage users, and it can be a little bit sensationalist. Like I said, the Bubble app builder and ecosystem is a good product, but Bubble as a brand has become iconic. You think no code app builder, you think Bubble. I've said it before: being first is better than being the best. Bubble was the first. Is it still the best? Speaking as an app developer, there are other no-code platforms as comprehensive as Bubble. At least there's nothing you can build on Bubble in 2023 that you can only build on Bubble. Bubble was founded in 2012. Today, it's still a leading platform. But when you consider its advantages versus its disadvantages, I think Bubble controls a large portion of the no-code market just because the brand has become so Okay, there are certainly other no-code development tools that have just come out in the last few years alone, and uh, they are really worth paying attention to. The thing that I think sets Bubble apart is that uh, it does fill and dominate a space between overly simplistic or you know something really quick. Take for example, Glide. You can build some sort of spreadsheet tracker app in Glide. But the UI is limited and UI limitations and kind of pre-built blocks, uh, they make app development really quickly, but they're limited. And then on the other end of the spectrum, of course, you've got traditional coding. And I do wonder whether whether the, the guy behind this video, whether uh, he speaks from the perspective of having that level of technical expertise to build a coded app. Because there are app building platforms that are further towards traditional coding than Bubble, which require you to you know, kind of get a little bit scrappy with JavaScript or or if you really want to be able to customize them, then you do have to add in a coded element. So my thoughts on Bubble are that Bubble fills in a space where a, a visual builder offers so much capacity for what you can build. And I'm not aware of one that is quite like that. Now, like I say, there are other visual no-code app builders, but I would put some of them slightly close to the traditional coding, which means that you do need that heightened level of um, of technical knowledge and also the time it takes to learn. So big. That's never good for end users. And from there are two reasons why I wouldn't be comfortable with using Bubble. Primary reason, vendor lock-in. When you build an app on Bubble, you don't own the code base. Bubble this. I can see a new founder being like, that's not a bit good. Working with a fee what sticks. Two sites off site with a profitable idea. Pay for apps fast 
And that's often... Okay, so he's going on to talk about vendor lock-in. And actually, most of his video, the point he comes back to is vendor lock-in. And I'm not going to dismiss that. That is a really important point to consider. But it's just something to consider when weighing up with other options. For example, uh, if you get a quote from a, you know, a custom web developer for five grand, uh, whereas you can spend $30 a month and build your MVP in two months of bubble, you're going to weigh that up based on, um, based on your own product development roadmap, uh, and based on basically the, the time and the finances that you have available. Uh, you can't get, uh, you can't get better than Bubble um, for uh, kind of just that ease of use to be able to get something out really quickly. But yeah, by all means, consider vendor lock-in. But the same would be if you, if you built a website with Webflow. I know that there is some sort of there you can export from there, but but effectively, so you are paying for the reliability and the service provided by like an all-in-one platform, giving you the hosting and all the tools to build your website all that matters. My issue is that Bubble wants you to stay with them even on this site. You see it in their wordings, marketings, and how articles about 7 figure SaaS using Bubble. It's great for Bubble. If your SaaS is super active, you use more Bubble resources and pay them more. And to be fair, bold and flexible. But they cannot deny they are depending a whole lot on Bubble. To its, it are so common. Sadness stages are alternative. Okay. Use so Bubble has shown that there's two things mentioned here. One is the pricing increases. And again, I'm not going to diminish that because uh, the bubble in the last two to three years, uh, first of all, had a real fiasco when they announced the pricing changes and there was such kickback from the community that they rolled back on it within a few weeks. But it, that, admittedly, uh, that came as a real shock. Uh, and then there was a year later, they said, like, we've been listening, we've done a load of surveys and they once more introduced new pricing, they introduced workload units, you know, their, the nature of their platform changed there. Now there are certain apps you can't build, like uh, you, you couldn't build a Google Analytics clone uh, with Bubble because your workload units would go through the roof if you were recording that many events going on. Um, but also, I think he's just picking some fringe cases, you know, whether you are hand building an app. Uh, or you're using a platform, there are always go you know, there's that curve of success. There's always going to be those mega successful examples, and they will be in the minority. And there's also the simple fact that whether it's it's a web business or a regular business, most businesses fail. Uh, but that's not necessarily down to the platform that they use to build them. They're not attached to you at all, and I don't blame them. Someone gave an answer, I think all new rate vendor lock-in in 2023. You don't have to. There are other... Okay, more about Vivan, vendor lock-in. Share Tribe, Flutterflow, just to name a few. So the yeah. Okay, so great examples of alternatives, which you, alternatives that you should consider before plowing hours and hours of your time, money, and energy into Bubble. Um, but yeah, weigh them up, have a play. You give yourself a couple of hours on each platform and then decide which one is going to be easiest to build your idea. I don't think there's anything controversial about that. Give you the strength of Bubble without its biggest drawback. Why aren't they more popular? It could be that they s Or it could be they went first and don't have anywhere near the market. Again, I would agree that there are some amazing software products out there that require far more recognition. And so, yeah, you know, kudos to this guy for highlighting them. King budget of Bubble. Yeah, so that's my worry when it comes to reason the limitations of no code. No code is a great way for non-tech founders to build MVPs. I would say it's arguably the most time and cost effective way, but it's an MVP. When your SaaS or even website needs to grow and scale, your no code app builder might be enough. It might not, probably not actually. Now, okay. again, he's coming down on, on one side so that he's making a clear point, but it, it, come on, there is so much more nuance here. Yeah, it is gonna depend on the app. It's going to depend on what you're doing on Bubble, whether that app can scale from 10 users to 10,000 users. It's also going to depend on your pricing model. For example, you've got to consider that is as your Bubble costs go up, hopefully the amount that you're making, uh, you know, your your monthly recurring revenue is going to go up too because you're onboarding more users. So the more users you have, the more your costs go up, but the more profit that you're making. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have the option to stay on your no-code platform or take your app and find a new home? The flexibility to make decisions without being limited by the tools you use? To me, that's not even nice. It's non-negotiable. And Bubble's just 
not built to offer that level of flexibility, which is fine, I guess, as long as it's good enough. But for every better legal, Okay, but yeah, we all experience vendor lock-in. Yeah, I have been in the Apple ecosystem for over a decade. Uh, I know that I can go and buy a, a Pixel phone that I, you know, it's not that big a deal to put my calendars onto Google Cal and to get in the Android ecosystem. Um, but uh, for me, the, the perks of being within an ecosystem uh, outweigh the negatives of considering vendor lock-in. Uh, so I, I'm happy. Okay, you know, I'm not happy because there's some serious, especially in the EU, some serious anti-competitorship things going on with Apple. But what I mean is that I will continue to buy iPhones because I continue to value them as a product. I'm going to continue to build with Bubble because I continue to value everything that Bubble gives me back as a product. Legal or flexible that runs their million dollar SaaS on no code, you get many more founders that need to transition out of no code. Saying all that, I'll still recommend Bubble if a non-tech founder asks me, Hey, can I use Bubble? I'd say, yes. If you aren't 100% sure what you need, then Bubble is a safe option to build an MVP fast. And you can iterate beyond MVP too. But it's still no code at the end of the day. So be prepared to re- I think we've got to acknowledge that the limitations on no code are going to diminish. We're going to get a, a, a coming together of what you can build, yeah, what you can build with, with no code uh, and what you couldn't is a gap that is getting smaller and smaller over time. I mean, we can imagine a future where there, drag and drop is gone because AI generates all the content for you based on uh, what you say to your device. It transcribes it and it builds an app around that. I, I, I think that, the, that the, this uh, video creator it is missing a point, which is that even with vendor lock-in, even with changes to the price, $30 a month, $32 a month for everything that you get with Bubble, the ability to launch an MVP and have 100 users on there. You know, again, depending on the type of app you're building, uh, you know, that's extraordinary value. Uh, sure, you know, if you were, if, even if you were uh, using cheap labor uh, from the other side of the world and you were paying a developer, you would get into hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get even the most basic MVP. But Bubble, you know, it's ninety dollars. Is three months building an app in Bubble where you can achieve extraordinary things. So yeah, we've got to bear that in mind when we talk about Bubble pricing. The that you get extraordinary value for money. Rebuilt everything. If someone asked me if Bubble is the best and would I personally use it for a business that I want to run long term, I'd say no. Whatever capability it offers is just not worth the risk of vendor lock-in. If I was going to go no code to build a prototype or MVP, there are options without vendor lock-in. Again, WeWeb, Dropbit, ShareTribe, Flutterflow. So what what you're talking about vendor lock-in here, again, <laughs> there's a nuance, isn't there? Because just because you can export code from something, is that really then being free from vendor lock-in? Because if you don't have the experience and the technical expertise to make changes to that code, if you can't import that code into a separate uh, developer application and continue to make changes to it, then you are still locked in. Just because you can take it and you can host it somewhere, credit, yeah, there is some freedom there. Uh, you know, for example, uh, WordPress. So I spent over a decade working with WordPress sites and you, WordPress has got a huge open source community uh, and you get a lot of freedoms and a lot of benefits of that. For example, uh, if I found one web host really slow, I can move my web my WordPress site in say 20 minutes from one web host to another and make use of all the new services that that second web host offers. But at the end of the day, my WordPress site is a MySQL database and some files which I have very limited knowledge of being able to do anything with it if I was wanting to leave WordPress. Uh, I'm still locked into using WordPress. All of that time that I've spent investing into building a WordPress site, uh, I've lost that if I decide that I want to build my site with Webflow and then, of course, potentially get locked into Webflow. So there are, there's a nuance here, a level of consideration that, that just needs to be, be thought of and reflected upon when it comes to you picking appropriate tools for building your projects. So why would I use Bubble? If you're already past MVP and working on a validated app idea, chances are you're going to need functions that need custom coding anyways. That's where nerds like me come in. So I just can't think of any situation where I'll be like, yes, Bubble is the best tool for this. Not anymore. 
but you can do it. Just know that if one day you get hit with a breaking change you can't fix because when they're locked in, you have one person to blame. As you can tell, I'm not... Okay, I mean, I'm almost there, but there's another side to that, which is that if you pay a developer to build an app for you, and then something you discover something's not worked, a customer sends you some feedback saying a key part of your app is broken, then you have to file a message to that developer. They have to still have the, you know, this could be months down the line, they have to still have the availability to respond to you to deploy changes. But if you've, if you've taken on the time to learn Bubble, and you've built the app yourself. This is one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to ever recommend like a template is because if you've built it yourself, you understand it. The time it takes to fix an issue plummets because you've built it yourself and you understand it. Uh, so you know, there are downsides to what this creator is, is weighing up. I'm not the biggest fan of Bubble. I don't have anything against Bubble. I just really can't stand when they're locked. Bubble today isn't unmatched. As the Reddit comment said, it's probably just the loudest in the room. Excuse me, nothing, nothing is, louder is louder than, than Adrian, Adrian Shea. There are alternatives to a bubble that let you build complex and comprehensive apps. Here's a video where I go over. Okay, so again, credit where credit's due. Uh, this guy's put together a really comprehensive video evaluating, evaluating the pros and cons of bubble. And of course, if you were to double the length of the video, you could put double the length of detail. And this is just a six minute video and I'm currently on 16 minutes uh, commenting on it here. Uh, and, and also, you know, he's not hiding the, the, the place that he's standing, the perspective, which is that he describes himself as a nerd and a developer. Uh, and he just says that Bubble is not useful for anything other than MVPs. Well, you know, you just got to go on X slash Twitter and MVP is a highly debated term. You know, it's, it's almost being used in an, in an ironic way now. Uh, so it is just up to you to evaluate and to have a clear product development roadmap and marketing plan in place. And once more, if you're really unsure where to start with those, head over to our website, click on our mastery page, because we are running a program for Bubble app creators just like you, where we cover the technicalities of building with Bubble, that would be led by me, uh, and then the other two founders of Planet No Code, they will be leading masterclasses, one-to-one -one mentorship around marketing and product development. And that's going to help you escape many of the pitfalls that this creator helpfully highlights, which is that if you have a clear understanding of where your product is going, then you only then can you truly evaluate whether your product is appropriate uh, for use. And yes, you know, Bubble is an appropriate no code tool to build your product. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank this creator for putting together like a really interesting video. Um, but as someone who works with Bubble app creators every day, and I have that amazing privilege of seeing their apps come to life, hearing uh, just their excitement when they get one, two, three, four, five users, uh, then a hundred users, you know, it, 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 it builds from there. Um, I'm, I'm not really into this bubble bashing or, or, or trying to oversimplify it because it comes down to you doing the research and evaluating the tools that are out there and available, uh, and then coming to your own conclusion. So yeah, I want to thank this creator for his video. Uh, and hopefully I've contributed something into this space because it's really important that, yeah, that we evaluate what's available out there and that we do pick the right tool before we sink a lot of time and a lot of money into it.